This is the finale of the Switching to Open Sousa 10 Day Challenge. And it was by far the worst in finale I've ever had. So let's get into it. How did this end? I'm coming up on the final 10 day challenge, but it's not quite 10 days. And it was a complete failure. Not totally failure, but I ran a zipper upgrade or a zipper uh, D up, which is basically a full upgrade of the system. And it wreaked havoc on my overall system. It installed Leap for some odd reason. And then I had a, some experimental like message drivers and other packages in there um that completely got borked with it to where when it finally did reboot and come back into it uh that package was basically giving me a black screen or put my monitor to sleep so i couldn't even access anything and uh you know to to get out of that you'd have to go into the kernel put no mod set and then uh, drop in and actually someone in the reddit actually already had the same issue as well and I kind of told them how to get out of it but it revolves around basically get into a safe mode of it and then uninstalling the message drivers and the extras in your system and then reinstalling the correct versions however I was just so upset and I kind of knew where this was headed I only have one day left on the challenge and uh, it was either kind of spend a couple hours straightening this out or just call it a day and walk away from the distribution. So I opted to do that. I called it a day and I'm just going to mark this as a failure. And I'm not going to say it's a failure on OpenSUSE's part because it really wasn't. This was me just having wanting more out of the distribution than really it is intended for. And if you're doing much gaming, if you're doing a lot of package builds from GitHub and doing more bleeding edge stuff, OpenSUSE is not what you should be doing. And I am very much doing all of the above. And that's what kind of led to this um, mishap. But I don't want you to take away from this that it's a bad distribution because it's not. It has a really good place. It's a rock solid distribution if you use it how it's intended. It's intended for enterprise, it's intended for businesses, or if you're just an average home user, it's also probably pretty good for you, uh, depending on what your needs are. And if your needs just revolve around business grade or just doing work and those types of things, uh, hey, it's a great distribution for that. But for gaming and, and the like, or installing a lot of experimental packages and those types of things, it isn't really great for that. Now, the file system ButterFS does snapshots and things which are good for um, doing a lot of risky things to where you can just take and you know revert back in time to that snapshot. Unfortunately, I did not set this up properly because I went to install or basically revert back to a prior snapshot of this and that didn't work. So, ah. You know, and that's that's my bad. The, the snapshots do work. I have done it in the past, so that is not an open Sousa problem. That is a me problem. Um, but a little bit disappointing, you know. It's the first challenge. I'd say it's just a failure on my part, and uh, it didn't end well. That's it. I mean, that's that's really all I have for this. I mean. I could have fixed it. I probably should have fixed it just to finish this out. But at the same token, I still wanted to do a lot more things. You've probably seen I haven't really done much uh, in the game side of things because there was some other things. I was doing a Fallout uh, video I wanted to do for Fallout 4, getting that working with the audio fixes and some other uh, real interesting uh, mods that you could do with uh, Linux. But it required me to build certain packages and it was just taking a long time in OpenSUSE because it really wasn't intended to do these experimental like audio driver packages and things that I needed to do to modify and make that game work properly on my system. And I understand that's 
it is what it is and you know it's kind of a letdown you know i'm a little bit disappointed uh because i really like the open susa i think it's a great op great distribution it's just i kind of burned it to the ground at the end and i just didn't have the heart to go through it fix it up and just put the time in it's getting late and i'm just like uh no not doing it but that's the conclusion i wish i had more to say at the end here that's that's the f big finale and i'm probably going to switch to like a manjaro architecture ar architecture edition just because uh i can customize a lot of the art stuff and i really wanted to give manjaro the full experience and i really like arch <laughs> I think Arch kind of ruined me in some ways because I really uh, saw that. And I know a lot of other users were really wanting me to try KDE Neon, but KDE Neon runs on 4.15 uh, Linux kernel, and that kernel does not work well with a Vega 64 where I need a more up-to-date kernel or 4.20 out of the box pretty much with Manjaro. So uh, that's the reason why I kind of wanted to try this next challenge. Uh, with FreeSync and everything else coming out, I kind of wanted to be on an Arch-based system just because there's some really cool stuff in the pipeline for AMD cards, and I wanted to be on that uh, bleeding edge. So I'll probably do a 10-day challenge on the Manjaro architecture addiction, and I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing like a KDE, much like I did in OpenSUSE here because I really love KDE, and I didn't get a chance to do any customizations and kind of show you all uh, how it is customized and how powerful it is. But uh, that's it for today's video, guys. And sorry to let you down, but, you know, these things happen. But I'll see you in the next one.